Dear students, welcome to today's class. Today I am going to explain a very very important topic that is complex numbers. This top chapter is a very very important for your JE mains examination, CBSE board examinations, general state board examinations. In JE mains examination, definitely and surely you are getting a one question from the chapter complex numbers. Okay. This knowledge of this complex number is useful for to solve the remaining uh, problems of the remaining chapters also. Okay, so very very important topic. So in this complex numbers today in, in my class I am going to explain the introduction. What is definition of a complex number? Integral power of iota, algebraic operations conjugate of a complex number, what is modulus of a complex, complex number, what is the argument of a complex number, then what the geometrical representation of a complex number, how to represent a complex numbers in two dimensional geometry. Okay, now, so all these, uh, uh, these topics I will uh, explain in JEE mains point of view. Okay, now, so let us start our class. Dear students, welcome to the class. What is the necessity of introduction of complex numbers? We have natural numbers, whole numbers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and integers, real numbers. So many numbers are there. What is the necessity of invention of these complex numbers? Okay. As you know that necessity is the mother of invention. So whenever we uh, require something, then only we invent. Okay, right. So, while well, in algebra, we come across so many equations, so many equations to be solved. We have to find out x value, y value, z value like that. For example, if a question is like this, if a question is like this, x plus 3 is equal to 5. Then what is the solution? Everybody knows that x is equal to 2 is the solution. The two solution is we can find from the set of natural numbers. You can find the solution from the natural numbers. This type of equations, we can find out the solutions from natural numbers. For example, 2x plus 3 is equal to 3 is there. So then what you have to substitute here to get to, to, to satisfy the given equation. So here x is equal to 0. So the solution will be available from the set of whole numbers. Okay now. For example, if your equation is x plus 3 is equal to 2, as we know that x is equal to minus 1. So the solution we will get from set of integers, negative integers and positive integers. For example, your equation is root x is equal to 2, then x is equal to root 2. You can find the solution from set of rational, irrational, irrational numbers. Okay, irrational numbers. For example, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, then x is equal to minus 1 by 2. You can find out the solution from rational numbers. So, all solutions are available from the set of some natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers. Okay. For example, if there is a quadratic equation is there, x square minus 5x plus 6 is there, you know that this has two solutions, that is x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3. These solutions are available from natural numbers. So, all these equations, the solutions are available from some fixed sets as already known sets that is the natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, everything we know. But there are certain equations whose solution is not available from the set of real numbers. The best example is x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Is it a quadratic equation or not? Yes. It is a quadratic equation. x square plus 1 is equal to 0 is a quadratic equation. You know that every quadratic equation has at most two solutions, alpha and beta. Now you find out one solution from one real number for which x square plus 1 is equal to 0. Obviously, the solution is not available from the set of real numbers. 
that means there is a necessity need of extension uh, extending the set of real numbers understand so the set of real numbers is not uh, enough to find the solution of this type of equation until 19th century this type of equations they generally the mathematicians they throw throw away and they were they, are, they called it as a some dirty numbers for example they solved it as a x square is equal to minus 1 x is equal to root of minus 1 they called it as a some ghost number some call it as a some dirty numbers they called it as a, they throw it away but after a great mathematician a great mathematician euler his name is euler euler or euler we can call him like the anything he introduced one symbol the symbol is iota the symbol is iota for the number root of minus 1 for the number root of minus 1 from this the total algebraic operations got revolutionized and uh, there is no equation whose solution does not exist every equation will have solution okay by introduction of this uh, symbol iota okay now so let us see what is that uh, symbol what are the properties of that symbol okay now so let us continue the class dear students welcome to the class integral powers of iota i so we know that a great mathematician Ionardo Euler, Euler defined, Euler defined the number root of minus 1 at the symbol i. Okay now. So we have the property that i square is equal to minus 1. i square is equal to minus 1. Now the what are the integral powers of i means i power 4n is equal to 1. That means in place of n, you substitute any natural numbers. For example, if you put n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1, what happens? i power 4 into 1, that is i power 4, that is i square whole square. i square means minus 1 whole square, that is equal to 1. So for all natural numbers n, i power 4n is equal to i. i power 4n plus 1 is equal to i. i power 4n is equal to 1 i power 4n plus 1 is equal to i, i power 4n plus 2 is equal to minus 1, i power 4n plus 3 is equal to minus i. Okay, now, sir, how to remember this, sir? How to remember these values, sir? If you know one number, the remaining all three are very easy to remember. i power 4n, 4n plus 1, 4n plus 2, 4n plus 3. Okay now, so first starting is 1, multiply with i, that means i power 4n plus 1 means what, i power 4n into i, i power 1, you multiply with i, 1 into i, i, i into i, i square, minus 1, minus 1 into i, minus i, understand, so these are the integral powers of iota, so using this, you can find out the any power of i, that means, uh, for example, if you want to find out i power, 2021 i power 2021 so this can be written as i power 4 times we multiply with the 4 so for example 4 times 4 4 5 are 0 into 0 so 4 5 are 20 4 5 are 2020 plus 1 so this is equal to i power 4 and plus 1 this is nothing but i understand so i power 2021 value is i like that like that any number i power any number you express this as either i power 4n i power 4n plus 1 i power 4n plus 2 i power 4n plus 3 these values you will get okay now so this is the integral powers of iota and uh, we have one more beautiful property uh, regarding this iota let us see that one more uh, very interesting properties of iota is the sum of four consecutive powers of i is equal to 0. The sum of four consecutive powers of i is equal to 0. Means what? For example, i plus i square plus i cube plus i power 4. Its value is 0. Its value is 0. So here, i power 1, 2, 3, 4. Its value is 0. 
of all, if you check it so i value is i i square value is minus 1 i cube value is minus i i power 4 value is 1 plus i minus i cancel plus 1 minus 1 will cancel you will get 0 understand not only that for example i power 2021 plus i power 2022 plus i power 2023 plus i power 2024 its value is also 0 so 2021 22 23 24 its value is also 0 okay now so this is a very very important thing that you have to remember remember so to use uh, you, this can this property can be useful for while solving the problems okay now so let us see uh, some more topics in complex numbers dear students welcome back to the chapter complex numbers so now we are going to define what is a complex number now we are going to see the definition of complex number right any number of the form x plus i y iota y x plus iota y is called a complex number okay now so here this structure this is a sister the structure x plus i y it is a structure that number is called a complex number here x and y are real numbers and uh, i is under square root of minus one okay now any number of the form x plus i y is called a complex number okay now so here x is called real part of z let the complex number be denoted with z real part of z and y is called imaginary part of z imaginary part of z that means x can be written as real part of z and y can be written as imaginary part of z understand this is the first thing you have to remember and the second thing what you have to remember is purely real number purely real number when it is purely real number there should not be any imaginary part there should not be imaginary part that means so this implies and the implied by imaginary part of z is equal to 0 and the third one is purely real number sorry purely imaginary number purely imaginary number this will this uh, happens when purely imaginary numbers means this your real part should be equal to 0 real part should be equal to 0 understand right so here whenever in the problem the complex number is a purely real numbers means you have to equate imaginary part should be equal to 0 from this you can say that from this we can say that 5 is also a complex number can i say 5 is a complex number as we can say that how can you say 5 plus i into 0 iota into 0 so 5 is a complex number whose imaginary part is 0 okay so for example 3i is also a complex number okay how can you say that yes it is also a complex number whose real part is 0 so from this we can say that all real numbers are complex numbers but all complex numbers need not be real numbers okay now so let us see some more properties of this definition okay now dear students let us see the algebraic operations on sets we are going to see that uh, algebraic operations on sets on complex numbers What are the algebraic operations? We know that we know the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Addition, subtraction, and multiplication and division. So as you know that one by one briefly, I will explain. So how to add uh, two complex numbers? As yes. we have to add only the real parts and uh, imaginary parts separately. So three plus six nine. So this is a five. So this is a way of adding complex numbers and. Uh, we know that complex numbers are uh, they are commutative and associative distributive property all those properties they satisfy second one subtraction of complex numbers so difference of complex numbers for example 3 plus 2 i is there difference of 1 minus i so this is given by so 3 plus 2 i minus 1 plus i this is 2 plus 3 i so this is the way of difference of 
complex numbers. That means you have to separate only the rear parts separately and uh, imaginary parts separately. Okay now and uh, multiplication of complex numbers. How to multiply two complex numbers? So this is given by very simple property 3 plus 2 i into 1 plus i. So just like distrib distributive property you apply 3 into 1 3 plus 3 into i 3 i plus 2i into 1, 2i plus 2i into i, i square, 2i square means minus 2. So, minus 2. So, 3 minus 2 is 1 plus 5i. Understand? Okay. So, the easily you can uh, define addition of uh, uh, complex numbers and uh, difference of two complex numbers and uh, multiplication of two complex numbers. But, to define the division of complex numbers, you require one more uh, topic that is conjugate. So, let us see what is conjugate of a complex number. So, before learning conjugate of a complex number, so how to represent a complex number in two-dimensional plane? So, this was first introduced by Carl Frederick Gauss and uh, Hamilton both almost at the same time both uh, both lived at the same time both this uh, great mathematician Carl Frederick Gauss Rowan Hamilton these great mathematician they represented a complex numbers in two dimensional geometry how they represented if you know that we can learn easily what is conjugate of a complex number okay now now in the two dimensional geometry we know that so this is a x axis and uh, it is y axis this is x axis horizontal number line is called x axis and vertical number line is called y axis what this great mathematician did is every complex number they defined it as an ordered pair of two real numbers x comma y so the real part is x imaginary part is y that means if it is 3 plus 2i is there 3 comma 2 that means this structure that system 3 comma 2 they defined as a complex number that means here they avoided this part i so in this is there any i is there no i is there imaginary part i symbol is there there is no i symbol that way they are very successful in uh, defining a complex number without i okay now then how to represent uh, x plus i y uh, in a two dimensional plane now they called uh, x axis as real axis they called it as now real axis and the y axis the whatever may be the vertical line this they called it as <coughs> imaginary axis okay why we are going to represent the imaginary numbers on imaginary part numbers on the y axis. For example, if the number is 3 plus 2 i is there, that means 3 comma 2. This uh, representation is as usual. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So here also minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. Okay. The number 3 comma 2, how to represent means just like in two dimensional Cartesian geometry, how you are represent the number 3 comma 2 in a two dimensional plane means so x is a 3 and y is equal to 2, y is equal to 2. So this is a 3, this is 3 and 2. So this is 3 comma 2, this is the complex number, this point, this point is a represent the complex number 3 comma 2 that is 3 plus 2y. So, this great idea first given by Gauss and Hamilton almost both simultaneously they though both, both mathematicians uh, uh, got the same idea to represent a complex number in a two dimensional plane. Okay now right after any number any number you can write for example minus 3 plus 2i so this skin is minus 3 comma 2 minus 3 comma 2 means what? Where it is minus 3 comma 2 yes it is minus 3 and 2 so this is a minus 3 comma 2 that number represents a complex number okay now right again if any number is there minus 2 minus i this is a minus 1 minus 2 comma minus 1 so this is minus 2 comma minus 1 this is the complex this that number 
represents a complex number. That means here also we have a 1 1 correspondence. 1 1 correspondence means what? Every for every complex number there is a one and only one point in the uh, this plane Gaussian plane. Okay now argand plane. Okay we call it as an argand plane. Now it we after representing this real axis and y axis and we this we call this plane as argand plane. In the previously when it is x axis and y axis is there it is called Cartesian planes. If the plane is uh, represented at the in the plane if you represent the points as a complex number that plane is called argon plane okay now right in this argon plane every point represents a complex number and for every complex number there exists one and only one point for example if this point is there what are the co coordinates of this point 3 comma minus 2 that means 3 minus 2 i Understand? So, here also there is a 1 1 correspondence between the complex numbers and the time. Right. So, we know, we learn this how to represent a complex number as a point in the argand plane. Now, we are going to define what is a conjugate of a complex number. Okay, now. So, let us define what is conjugate. Dear students, let us define what is conjugate of a complex number. Okay. Let us take the argand diagram, argand plane. So, this is a x axis and sorry, real axis and it is imaginary axis. This is a point of intersection origin, we call it as. Let us take any complex number, for example, z is z is x comma y, x comma y, that is a complex number. Its conjugate is denoted as z bar. The conjugate is denoted by z bar and it is defined as its image with respect to the real axis. Image with respect to real axis means what? So, if it is, it is, so its image will be here. This is z bar. So, this is given by x comma minus y. That is the definition of conjugate of a complex number. Wherever the number it is there, wherever the number it is there, its image with respect to x. For example, your number is here in the number is in the third quadrant. So, z is equal to minus x comma minus 1. z is equal to minus x comma minus 1. What is its image with respect to x axis? It will be here. So, this is a, uh, x is negative, y is positive. Understand? If it is a z, it is z bar. Wherever the number is there, wherever the number is, its image with respect to x axis. If the number is here, 1 comma 2, its conjugate is 1 comma minus 2, its image. For example, your number is here, number is here, minus 1 comma 3, its image will be here, that is a minus 1 comma minus 3, with respect to x axis. Whatever may be that, if your number is here, for example, uh, 3 comma minus 5, its image 3 comma 5. So, it is a conjugate. So, if your original complex number is denoted with z, its image conjugate will be denoted with z bar. Understand the definition of conjugate of a complex number. So, the conjugate of a complex number is nothing but its image with respect to x axis only, with image with respect to x axis only. Now, okay. Now, let us see the formal definition of a complex number. Okay. Right. Dear students, let us see the formal definition of a complex number. If z is equal to x plus i y, where x and y are real numbers and i is equal to root of minus 1 is a complex number, then its conjugate denoted by z bar and it is defined as x minus i y. x minus i y. So, this is a con complex number, then its conjugate is x minus i y. So, for examples, for examples, I will see that, uh, uh, I will give some numbers. 
tell me the conjugate. So, that is a 3 plus 2y. Conjugate is 3 minus 2i. Okay, now, for example, minus 3i plus 4. Minus 3i plus 4. What is the conjugate? 3i plus 4. So, only you have to change the sign of the imaginary part. For example, for example, minus 2i minus 3. Minus 2i minus 3. What is the conjugate? So, this is a 2i minus 3. 2i minus 3. That means you have to change only the sign of the imaginary part. Wherever may be the imaginary part, whether it is in the first or last. Okay, now. So, this is the, the formal definition of the conjugate of a complex numbers. Okay. Now, see the properties of the complex numbers. Okay. Now, see the properties. The first one is conjugate of conjugate of a complex number is original number z. So, very simple definition. If z is equal to x plus i by, what is conjugate x minus i by? What is conjugate of conjugate x plus i by? Again, you will get the original conjugate. That is a simple proof for that. And uh, second property is uh, z1 plus z2 whole conjugate is equal to z1 plus z2 whole conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate. Okay. You can extend this definition as z1 plus z2 plus z3 so on zn whole conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate plus z2 conjugate plus zn conjugate. You can extend this definition to any n number of complex numbers. Next one is next one is z1 into z2 whole conjugate is equal to z1 into z2 conjugate. z1 into z2 conjugate. Okay, now this you can extend to any number of complex numbers extension. That is z1 into z2 into z3 into so on zn is equal to z1 conjugate into z2 conjugate into z3 conjugate o on so on zn conjugate. Understand? So, these are the main properties. Let us see some more properties. Right. Coming to fourth property. So, fourth property is z1 by z2 whole conjugate is equal to z1 conjugate 2 by z2 conjugate provided z2 should not be the zero complex number. Should not be zero. Okay, now. So, here we are getting the definition of division of complex number. Division of complex number. How to divide one complex number with another complex number? For example, 3 plus 2i is there. So, you have to divide with 2 plus i. So, both are complex numbers. Then how to divide? So, take the conjugate of 2 plus i. What is the conjugate of 2 plus i? 2 minus i, 2 minus i. 2 plus i conjugate 2 minus i. So, let us take it. So, this is equal to ordinary multiplication 6 minus 3i plus 4i minus 2i square. i square is minus 1 already minus is plus to be there plus by a plus b into a minus b a square minus b square that is a 4 plus 1. That is a 6 plus 2 8 plus i by 5. So, this is equal to 8 by 5 plus i by 5. So, this is the definition of complex number division of complex number okay the next property is the next property is if z1 is equal to z2 then z1 conjugate is also equal to z2 conjugate okay now so those are the main properties of the conjugate of a complex numbers after learning this conjugate of a complex number let us go for modulus of a complex number okay now Dear students, let us define what is modulus of a complex number. What is modulus of a complex number? Okay. So, let us take an argon diagram. Let us take an argon diagram. So, this is a real axis and uh, it is a imaginary axis. Okay. 
let us take any complex number z is equal to x comma y or we can write as z is equal to x plus y. you can represent any way okay right that complex number may be in either in first quadrant or second quadrant or third quadrant fourth quadrant maybe on x axis or real axis or maybe on imaginary axis wherever it may be there the distance between the complex number from the origin the distance between the complex number from the origin the value the real number value positive real number zero or positive real number is called the modulus of that complex number okay now so what is this uh, what is the distance generally in cartesian coordinates how what is the how to find out the distance so the distance rho z is equal to root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square that is a x square plus y square this value is denoted as modulus of x square y square therefore if z x comma y is a complex number its modulus is nothing but the distance of that point from the origin for example if your complex number is here for example so this is a minus x comma y what is its distance same root of x square plus y square understand this same x square plus y square so the value whatever may be that value that value is gives the uh, modulus of that complex number right if the complex number is at z that is 0 comma 0 then what is its modulus of z is equal to 0 that means what the distance between these two points means same 0 understand this so this is the definition of modulus of a complex number okay now so let us see one more topic that is a argument of a complex number dear students let us define what is argument of a complex number okay now let us take a complex number z is equal to x plus i y where x comma y are real numbers and i is equal to iota i is equal to under square root of minus 1. Let us first represent this complex number z is equal to x plus i y in the argon diagram. Okay now. So in the argon diagram you know that what is argon diagram. So the vertical line and this horizontal line. So this is called real axis and it is called imaginary axis. Point of intersection is origin as usual. Right. Let us say that x and y are real numbers means x and y are both are positive. That means x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0. So that the complex number z x plus i y will be in the first quadrant. So this is a x comma y. Okay, na? So let us join this complex number point with the origin. So we know that the length is r. That is called modulus of that complex number. Let us do some construction, join here, some A, this is O. So, you have got uh, uh, some uh, right angle triangle. So, we know the length OA is X and uh, the length ZA is Y. Okay, now, right. Now, what is meant by argument of a complex number means the angle formed by the line OZ, the line OZ, that means the line which joins the origin with the complex number the here the angle is there no theta that is called that is called argument of that complex number argument of that complex number okay now so this is in general argument of z is equal to theta so as the complex number changes its position that means it's a position the theta will also will change the theta will also will change okay now Right. So, this is called argument of a complex number. Okay. Now, coming to here interval, what will be the interval? So, interval will mean, sir, for example, your complex number will be is here. So, this will be your angle theta. For example, if your complex number is in the fourth quadrant, if it is a complex number which is in the fourth quadrant, so this will be your theta. Understand? That means, Theta belongs to closed bracket 0 to 2 pi. That means theta belongs to 0 less than theta less than or equal to 2 pi. The interval, the length of the interval is 2 pi. 2 pi means 360 degrees or otherwise. Otherwise, you can take it as a minus pi less than theta less than or equal to pi. 
like this also you can take so here also that means uh, pi means this is a pi here minus pi this is also the uh, argument of the complex number that means that here also the length of the interval is 2 pi here also the length of the interval is 2 pi understand so here you can take sorry here minus pi to 2 pi minus pi to uh, pi also you can so the length is not uh, 2 pi so 0 to 2 pi also you can take or minus pi to pi also you can take the as a uh, uh, argument of the complex number from particularly the argument the angle which lies between minus pi to plus pi is called principal argument principal argument just like uh, in the previous class uh, we have uh, in the trigonometric equations principal solution we called it there here also just like uh, the angle which lies between minus pi to pi the angle which lies between minus 2 to pi is called the principal argument the principal argument understand so this is the uh, definition and uh, the properties of this uh, argument of a complex number now let us see that if the complex number is in first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant or it on x axis y axis j, negative x axis negative y axis what is its argument how to find out its argument let us see that dear students let us see the arguments of a complex number when it lies in the various places of Arga diagram. So, let us uh, take the Arga diagram like this and it is a real axis and it is imaginary axis ok now yeah, of course it is a origin. First if the complex number lies on the positive real axis its argument is 0, 0 degrees or 0 radians. If the complex number lies on the positive imaginary axis, its argument is pi by 2 or 90 degrees. Why? Because you know that the angle is 90 degrees. The angle made by the line joining the origin to that complex number, how much the angle it makes with the positive real axis. Okay now. If the complex number lies on the negative real axis, then its argument is, here the argument of z is pi, 180 degrees. That means the angle this is 180 degrees, right. If the complex number lies on the negative of the imaginary axis here, then it is uh, minus pi by 2. So, if it is a pi by 2 this is minus pi by 2 as you know right up to that very clear if the complex number lies at the origin at the origin at the origin very very important at the origin the argument of z is any real number theta real value of theta you can take if the complex number is at the origin if the complex number is at origin, you can take uh, any real value of theta. Any real value of theta will becomes the argument of that complex number up to that very clear. Now, if the complex number lies in the first quadrant, its argument is argument of z is theta, if it is theta. So, argument of z is theta. If the same complex number, sorry, if the complex lies in the fourth quadrant, if the complex number fourth quadrant, then its argument is minus theta. That means its conjugate theta is minus theta. Right. If the complex number lies in the second quadrant here, its argument is pi minus theta argument of z is equal to pi minus theta that means here up to 180 you know 180 minus theta 180 minus theta if the complex number is in the fourth quadrant its conjugate is minus pi plus theta minus pi plus theta that means if the complex number is in the fourth quadrant first we will calculate this angle we will sub minus we will do minus pi minus theta okay now 
that means if it is a theta here minus theta if it is a pi minus theta it is minus pi plus theta that just to multiply with minus 1 okay now right so this is the structure of the uh, finding the argument of a complex numbers okay now so dear students i hope that you understand today's class okay so some more topics are there regarding this uh, complex numbers that is a uh, uh, polar form or Euler form of a complex numbers all those things are there in the next class I will explain and uh, I will come before you along with some uh, previous JEE mains questions okay now so until then all the best.